Hello, I'm Tom Moore from the Bar Tinsel Lab and in this particular video we're going to be talking about using jailhouse ingenuity. Now what I mean by that is often you might be called upon or you might need to acquire or fashion an improvised weapon. And a really important part of that knowledge and that discovery is A, understanding different weapon archetypes and how they're used. How does a long blunt weapon compared to a short blunt weapon? How does a small sharp weapon compared to a long sharp weapon? So if you understand the basics of that weapon archetype, you can apply pretty much any tool, any different drill bit in there and work it perfectly. So we're gonna talk through some of the jailhouse methods. So if you think about environments where people are stripped of pretty much anything you could consider weaponized. So they are in complete condition zero. You know, they would have been strip searched. Anything that is a weaponized tool will likely have been taken off them. Obviously there are exceptions to that, but most people will be completely weapon free. And um, one of the first things that many people do, many dangerous people do, is they arm up, they tool up, because you know, one of the main principles about being combative is get armed, be armed, and stay armed. These are important principles. So I'm gonna talk through some of the ways in which they might do that using inconspicuous items and some of the archetypes of these types of weapons to be aware of. Now, I'm gonna start off with one of my favorites, and my favorite is the Millwall brick. Millwall brick is essentially a folded up piece of newspaper. So in its final form, in its final evolution, it's a folded newspaper, not rolled, folded, closed it up on itself and held like so. And it may look like a piece of shit. It may look like an absolute piece of shit, but this bottom bit here, so if you see the fold, this bottom bit here is basically a brick. It feels absolutely solid. So get any length of newspaper and I'll make another one now. Any newspaper, what you do is you start making small rectangular folds okay so i'm just going to quickly roll them over but again to make it flat not as a tube small rectangular folds and you should end up with a squared off piece like that then you bend it in half okay once you've bent it in half you can then grab both ends of that particular weapon the smaller the newspaper the harder it will be to bend but the more solid it will be as an end result and you'll end up with this brick configuration here a solid lump of tool okay and you want to hold it as if you were holding a big fucking rock it takes seconds to make and it is absolutely a beast you can crack a coconut with this thing which is harder than the human skull you can dent people you can cause serious serious damage with these typically they are hammer strikes. Bam, bam, bam. Yeah, so you really are smashing and raking this in. You can also use it in a forehand way, like so. So again, you can drive this into the throat, into the eye, into the groin, but this often, when under duress, is a lot more fallible. This falls apart as soon as you let go, unless you've taped it. Otherwise, the weapon will release itself. So if you're making a Millwall brick, named after the famous Millwall football hooligans in the 1970s and 80s. Bend it this way, hold it solidly in your fist. Many Americans might not have heard of or might not be familiar with the Millwall brick. You might be a bit skeptical. Make one, it'll take you seconds. Tap yourself a little bit and you will be a believer. You know, it's very easy to be an evangelist of these soon as you feel it. Soon as you feel how solid the end of that Millwall brick is, you can realize how devastating this can be quite quickly. So if you imagine a piece of jailhouse or hooligan piece of innovation, something you can easily craft if you're getting on a plane, if you're on a train, if you're going to a dangerous area, even with nothing around you, you can make a millwall brick and you can feel in seconds how devastating that is. So one of the things I do when the world isn't ending is I travel to London a lot because my job requires me to go to London a fair bit. Every time you go to London, you get a free newspaper called Metro. They're everywhere. On my way to London, I take the approximate 30 seconds necessary, once I've finished reading it, to make myself one of these, and I have it near me, in my pocket, or on my person, for the rest of the day, should I need it. It's a nice piece of mental discipline, but a Millwall brick, it hits like a brick, it's solid, it's easy to make, it's quick to make, it's a solid piece of jailhouse ingenuity. Okay. 
Things that you need to be aware of is spiked weapons. It's so easy to make a spike tool. So even down to its most primal, a piece of snapped wood. So a piece of snapped wood with a point here, something anyone, anywhere can make. So a lot of prison tools, a lot of prison shanks and shivs are point tools. It's very hard to hone an edge unless you've got proper tools to do so. And to keep an edge, something that might have had an edge once, that will fade very, very quickly due to wear, tear, storage, friction, everything that wears on that particular edge will fade, whereas a point will hold its point for a very long time. So a bit of wood snapped off a chair, you know, a twig broken in the wrong way, a pen snapped in the wrong way, a pencil that sharpened a point tool. So point tools are very easy to acquire, they're very easy to make, and they're very easy to retain. You, know, you can take something snappy, you got a point tool very, very, very quickly, and it requires very little maintenance and very little knowledge to deploy effectively. So again, with a point tool, often when it's improvised, it's fragile or can be fragile. So again, you don't want to waste it going against harder parts of the human body. You want to be really thinking throat, eyes, you know, you'd be thinking these types of areas where you can get maximum penetration of that point tool. Even if it might feel relatively robust, unless you've really worked on it as a tool, it will be somewhat fallible. Um, but again, you might provide like a sabre grip, like I've got on this piece of wood where it runs around the back. You might lock in a solid hammer grip, but typically a point tool can be held forehand and driven in. But if it's more fragile, if it's prone to breaking, tend to go eyes and throat. If it's less fragile and is more robust, let's say um, a sharpened screw, a bit of nail that comes off something, anything with a point to it, you can drive it into the body in that jailhouse method. But ten typically, if they're a bit more fragile, it's an up top. You can, of course, switch it to an ice pick grip um, or a reaper style grip. Either of these things will work really well. Again, I'd say if you've just got the point tool and no edge up top, hammers to the face are quite good because as soon as you get to a clash of bodies, which happens all the time, as soon as you get to a clash of bodies up top, you can still work this in, into the neck, into the eye, behind the ear. You can really use this tool. If you've got it in a forehand configuration, unless you're always pumping and applying pressure, you end up in this nasty tangle, it's harder to bring the weapon around into play effectively. Whereas at hyper close range, in this kind of configuration, you can really hack people up to bits. So again, improvised tools, a point tool, can be made of anything. Melted toothbrush, snap piece of wood, snap piece of biro, a screw that's come loose. You can find these anywhere. Again, often people will bind them, so they'll add something which adds a bit of grip or stops them at least cutting themselves or hurting themselves with that tool. And instantly you've got something we can use in an underhand fashion. If it's solid, let's say it's metallic and you can use it, or in an ice pick methodology, again, eyes and throats predominant targets here and they work really well if you end up in hyper close range which often you will. You then move through to a slightly different category which is cutting tools. So there are some tools which can be made or can be acquired which are just for cutting and not for thrusting. So for example uh, this is a piece it's a it's a lid it's a lid from a from a pie in a tin okay you bend it fold it in half and suddenly you've got a really sharp nasty serrated edge. Now with these types of cutting only tools, often you will want some degree of surety that it's not gonna cut you as you're using it. So, you know, in this basic form, I've just used some foil so I can hold this in a decent pinch grip, or if it was smaller, I could hold it in a full hammer grip. And again, you can cut through with this and cause massive damage to the face. You know, depending on the sharpness and the depth, you can cause quite severe arterial damage. But you know, really these are face tools. Anything used for, for slashing is typically used up top because if it's improvised, it's not going to hold such a keen edge as a proper blade would. So again, things like tins, broken bits of razor, any, anything that can be snapped and has an, a more kind of circumference lead edge is typically a slicing tool. And typically you'll have some safety binding to it. But again, these things can be made and acquired anywhere in the world, used anywhere in the world, 
Again, this is now a weapon. You know, you've weaponized this. So do bear that in mind. But just to make you aware of some people's ingenuity, they can make weapons out of anything. If you can get something even slightly sharp once you bend it, and something slightly blunt, blunt to keep your hands safe, you've got a wickedly vicious slashing tool that can really key someone up rather nastily. So again, slashing tools are very, very common. A very, very common uh, use of jailhouse ingenuity is be, be able to make coshes very quickly. Now you can use a hoodie, you can, sorry, hoodie, you can use a hat, so like this, you can use a sock, you can use a t-shirt, you can use any piece of fabric, put something relatively hard inside. So let's say I've got this beanie and I've got this tin of chickpeas. Put it in here, wrap that up. Now I've got, I've got a nasty bludgeoning tool. So all I need is a piece of fabric and something hard. And that something hard could be a rock, it could be a load of coins, it could be soap, it could be tins, could be a small tub of Vaseline, you know, so you might take a small tub of Vaseline with you, put it in this, instantly you've got a smashing kosh-like weapon. So again, anything that can go into fabric, then secured. Ideally, the fabric isn't so long as to make the weapon unwieldy. You know, you don't want huge amounts of flexibility, just enough, just enough to be able to use that koshing tool. So again, um, you know, if you're going on a plane, if you've got something hard on you, so if you've got Vaseline, soap, anything you like, in a hat, padlock in a hat, anything you like really, anything that's got some degree of rigidity to it, as soon as it goes into that fabric structure, in essence, you've got a very good tool. And you can cause some very serious damage with it. And again, it's something where, with a bit of jailhouse ingenuity, you can carry things on you that seem innocuous, but that can be weaponized very quickly if you find yourself going in transport in dangerous places or during dangerous times. So again, solid piece of jailhouse ingenuity is the use of a Kosh style product. And finally, just because it's fascinating, uh, well, morbidly fascinating, you've also got to think of a piece of jailhouse ingenuity, which is chemical and projectile. So one of the ones to talk about is what's known in the UK as prison napalm. Prison napalm is essentially hot water in a mug and as a tea drinking nation, whether you're in prison, even if you're on death row, whatever, you know, wherever you are in the world, you'll be able to operate and find yourself with at least warm water, if not hot water. Overfill with sugars, so lots and lots of sugar, make this very, very hot, stir it up, once thrown into the face of an antagonist, will stick, will burn, because you've essentially made a syrupy, hot syrupy style chemical irritant. You've caused yourself a horrible, nasty tool. So prison napalm is boiled water, lots of sugar, mix it up, whoosh. So again, straight into the face of an assailant, leaves them very, very weakened for follow-up attacks. So something to be aware of, you know, you never endorse doing such a thing, but you need to be aware of these things. You need to be aware of just how brilliant the human mind is at coming up with ways to hurt and injure each other. So things to watch out for. And then we'll move back to a very, very old classic one. Very old classic one. I use this notepad and the rolled up newspaper. Now you see this used all the time. And um, there's two particular ways to use it. Again, with a solid magazine, roll of paper, whatever. You've got the hammer grip. The hammer grip, once you've got the tight edge for this, a bit like the mill wall brick, is a solid smashing tool. So you've got real nasty, crushing power with this is a solid unit so again on the nose on the jawbone against the head against the temple around the side so don't just always think down you can move yourself to the side with this you've got all manner of options with that but you've also got forehand as well um, so a styers grip so if you've got this you can drive it into the groin drive it up under the jaw drive it into the throat driving it into the eye so if you hold it with your hand predominantly towards the bottom end. Its main purpose is these hammer style clubbing blows, but you've also got these forehand strikes if there is space or opportunity. You know, if you've smashed here, you've got a bit of space and you need to finish the show. There's no point you closing again to do this. You can drive thrusting style strikes into it too. The important thing is working on your grip strength so you can retain 
this as a useful weapon. So again, you go to dangerous places, you're going on modes of transport which provide risk. As soon as you finish your newspaper, roll it up, have it ready, have it on you, have it on your lap. Again, you've caused no, if you were gonna throw it away anyway, roll it, and then if you do need to use it, it's simple. Even in its relaxed state, it should hold the roll. Then with a small compression, you've got a brilliant thrusting and smashing tools. Um, so again, a lot of these methods are ubiquitous in penal systems, in criminal circles, where mainstream weapons have been taken away. So they are A, things to be aware of that can be used against you, and B, things that you may wish to manufacture in times and states of duress where you really, really need it. So again, a bit of jailhouse ingenuity can sometimes help us all.